Lunacode 1, about whose fate nothing was known for almost 40 years, was found by researchers from the University of California, San Diego, led by physics professor Tom Murphy. And thus, put an end to various mystical speculations. In fact, there was even talk that the Soviet vehicle was hijacked. Most likely aliens, who have bases on the moon. On Lunacode 1, there was a so-called corner reflector. In its simplified form, it was an open box with three mirrors mounted perpendicular to each other. Its peculiarity, any ray falling on the mirrors is reflected exactly at the point from which it was released. Laser beams were released from the Earth to determine the distance to the Moon, which, as it turned out, is gradually moving away about 38 millimeters per year. They pointed it at the Lunocode 1, caught reflected photons. And they timed the time it took for the light to travel back and forth. And knowing its speed, we calculated the distance. The self-propelled apparatus was equipped with a French corner reflector. This explains why the first experiments with it were conducted in 1971 in the USSR and France. That is, there is no doubt that the Lunocode 1 was really on the moon. However, suddenly it stopped reflecting laser beams. As if it quickly moved away from the place where it had just been. Or fell somewhere. In short, disappeared. At least, that's what it looked like from Earth. Lunocode 1 stopped blinking back on September 14, 1971. And since then, it has been persistently searched for. Scientists sent a laser pulse to the supposed location of the apparatus, the Sea of Rains area. No one has ever responded. Though, there is no need to aim much, the thinnest beam, reaching the moon, expands. The area of its spot on the surface reaches 25 square kilometers. It is hard to miss. The explorers missed, but did not give up. And then there was a chance to go in from the other side. Namely, to first search for the apparatus visually. They began to examine the images transmitted by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, which is currently orbiting the Moon. On those made from a height of 50 kilometers, we were able to make out the Soviet lunar station Luna 17. We even saw the wheel tracks of Lunacode 1 and a track rolled around the station, says Tom Murphy. The Californians looked at where the rut eventually led. And in other images, they found the P of the first lunar self-propelled vehicle. A beam was sent to it on April 22 of this year. Aimed with a powerful laser telescope installed at the observatory, Apache Point Observatory in Sunspot, New Mexico. And there was a response. The apparatus was a few kilometers from where they were looking for him earlier, said Russet McMillan, Russet McMillan, from the observatory. In a couple of months, we'll have the coordinates to the nearest centimeter. The answer that came instantly from the moon was, of course, gratifying. But it was also puzzling. It was so clear, as if someone had cleaned the reflector. And it was also accurately turned in the direction of Earth. Corner reflectors are installed on several other lunar vehicles, but the return signal from Lunacode 1 is several times brighter than others, Tom Murphy wonders. In the best cases, we got 750 photons back to Earth. But here we got over 2,000 on the first try. This is very strange. The researcher is also surprised because he himself discovered that the efficiency of reflectors operating on the moon has decreased by about 10 times. That is, those that were left on the Lunocode 2 and installed by the astronauts of Apollo 11, minus 14 and minus 15 missions became badly deteriorated. Probably got dusty. Or scratched. But the instrument on Lunocode 1, one of the oldest, looks as good as new. It's like 40 years ago. It's a mystery. Recently, a Canadian researcher Phil Stuke from the University of Western Ontario made out our Lunocode 2 in the pictures, transmitted from the orbit of the moon. It was easier for the Canadian, the twin brother of the Moonwalker 1 was standing in the sea of clear. Lunocode 2 arrived with the Luna 21 station in 1973. It landed about 150 kilometers from the American Apollo 17. And according to one legend, the apparatus drove to the site where the Americans were operating and riding their self-propelled crew in 1972. It seems that the Lunocode 2, equipped with a camera, 
was supposed to take pictures of the equipment left by the astronauts and to confirm that they were really there. It seems that the USSR still had its doubts, although they never officially admitted it. The self-propelled vehicle traveled 37 kilometers, a record for travel on other celestial bodies. It really could have made it to Apollo 17, but it caught loose soil from the edge of the crater, overheated from that, and broke down. U.S. scientists hit the Soviet Lunacode with a laser beam, the kind of news that appeared in the science media in late April. Lunacode 1 has been stationary on the moon for almost 40 years, so the high intensity of the return beam, caught by the researchers, was all the more surprising. Now experts intend to use the woke-up Lunacode for various scientific experiments and even check the theory of relativity with it. Before you tell how the car created in 1970 with the notorious radioactive isotope of polonium inside is connected with Albert Einstein, briefly remind what events preceded the appearance of the described news. The remotely piloted self-propelled vehicle, Lunokhod 1, was developed at the Lavochkin Research and Production Association as part of the Soviet space program. After the success of Sputnik and the famous Gagarin's Let's Go, the USSR was seriously preparing for the next step, lunar exploration. In Crimea, near Simferopol, a training ground was created, where the future inhabitants of the lunar base were trained to operate special vehicles for moving on the lunar soil, and test engineers learned to control the movement of unmanned Lunokhod's vehicles of class Lunokhod 1. A total of four such vehicles were built. One of them was to become the first terrestrial object to reach the surface of the satellite. On February 19, 1969, the proton rocket carrying the Lunokhod 1 was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. However, in the 52nd second of flight, the rocket exploded due to an emergency shutdown of the first stage engines. It was impossible to organize a new launch immediately, and as a result, the Americans, who were working just as hard on the manned spaceflight program, were the first to make it. Apollo 11 with Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins on board was launched on July 16 of that year. A second attempt to launch Lunokhod 1 was made by Soviet engineers on November 10, 1970. This time the flight went smoothly, on the 15th, the Luna 17 Automatic Interplanetary Station orbited the Earth's satellite, and on the 17th, it landed in the Sea of Rain, a giant crater filled with dried lava. Lunokhod 1 drove down to the surface of the Moon and set off. The scientific program of the Moon rover was very extensive, the device was supposed to study physical and mechanical properties of the lunar soil, photograph the surrounding landscape and its separate details and transmit all data to the Earth. The low-flight body of the Moon rover was on a platform equipped with eight wheels. The apparatus was more than all-wheel drive, the operators could independently adjust the direction and speed of rotation of each wheel, changing the direction of the rover almost at will. However, it was not easy to control the rover because of almost 5 second signal delay, the signal goes from the Earth to the Moon and back for just over 2 seconds, the operators could not navigate by the momentary situation and had to anticipate the location of the vehicle. Despite these difficulties, Lunokhod 1 traveled more than 10.5 kilometers, and its mission lasted 3 times longer than the researchers had hoped. On September 14, 1971, as usual, scientists received a radio signal from the lunar rover, and shortly thereafter, as night fell on the moon, the temperature inside the rover began to drop. On September 30, the sun illuminated the Lunokhod 1 again, but it did not get in touch with the Earth. The specialists think that the equipment couldn't endure a lunar night with its frost of minus 150 degrees centigrade. The reason for the moon rover's sudden cooling down is simple, it ran out of the radioactive isotope polonium-210. It was the decay of this element that heated the instruments while it was in the shade. During the day, the Lunokhode 1 worked on solar panels. The exact location of the moon rover was unknown to scientists in the 70s, navigation technology was less developed than now, and besides, the lunar terrain itself remained largely unexplored. And to find a vehicle, the size of which is comparable to a small car, at a distance of 384,000 kilometers is a more difficult task than to find the proverbial needle in a haystack. Hopes on detecting the moon rover were connected with orbital lunar probes orbiting the Earth's satellite. However, until recently, the resolution of their cameras was not enough to discern the Lunokhod 1. 
That all changed in 2009, when the Americans launched the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter LRO, equipped with an LRO camera designed specifically to photograph objects as small as several meters. Specialists supervising LROC noticed a suspicious light object on one of the images transmitted by the probe. Determination that the spot, which was captured by the camera, was the automatic station Luna 17, helped to determine the ruts leaving the object. Only Lunocode 1 could have left these tracks, and by following where the tracks lead, the scientists discovered the apparatus. More precisely, they found a spot, which with high probability was nothing other than a frozen moon rover. Simultaneously with specialists from NASA, the probe LRO was created under the auspices of the American Space Agency, a team of physicists from the University of California, San Diego, was searching for the moonwalker. As its head Tom Murphy, Tom Murphy later said, the scientists have tried for several years to find the device in the area, which is located many kilometers away from the true stopping place of the moon rover. Scientists using the LRO probe also found the second Soviet Lunocode 2 on the moon. Shortly after these reports appeared, scientists involved in the development of the Soviet lunar program stated that they had never lost a vehicle. You might wonder why Californian physicists hunted so hard for the Soviet vehicle. The answer is not quite obvious, the moon rover is needed by researchers to test the theory of relativity. At the same time, the Lunocode as such does not interest specialists. The only detail for which they have been looking for years, it is installed on the apparatus angle reflector, a device that reflects the radiation falling on it in the direction strictly opposite to the direction of incidence. With the help of corner reflectors mounted on the moon, scientists can determine the exact distance to the moon. To do this, a laser beam is sent to the reflector and then waited for it to reflect and return to Earth. Since the speed of the beam is constant and equal to the speed of light, by measuring the time from sending the beam to its return, researchers can know the distance to the reflector. Lunocode 1 is not the only vehicle on the moon equipped with an angle reflector. Angular reflectors are an excellent tool for determining the orbit having many measured distances from the Earth to the moon, scientists can very accurately derive the rotation trajectory of the satellite. The liquid insides of the moon affect the nature of the satellite's motion, try rotating boiled and raw chicken eggs on a table, and you will immediately see how this influence manifests itself, and therefore in order to get an accurate picture it is necessary to find out exactly how the moon deviates due to the features of its core. So, the fifth reflector was vital to Murphy and colleagues. After the scientists established the location of Lunocode 1, they shot a laser beam with a diameter of about 100 meters into the area using the facility at Apache Point Observatory in New Mexico. The researchers were lucky, they hit the reflector of the moonwalker on the second attempt and thus narrowed the range of the search to 10 meters. To the surprise of Murphy and his team, the signal that came from the moonwalker one was very intense, more than 2.5 times stronger than the best signals of the second moonwalker. In addition, the scientists were lucky in principle that they were able to wait for the reflected beam because the reflector may well have been turned away from the Earth. In the near future, the researchers intend to clarify the location of the apparatus and begin full-fledged experiments to verify the validity of Einstein's statements. Thus, the history of the Moon Rover 1, interrupted 40 years ago, has received an unexpected continuation. To somehow reduce the degree of future discussions, we would like to note that science is an international affair, and therefore arguing about national priorities of scientific works is an activity, at best, useless. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.